friends, we are discussing the textures of igneous rocks. In our previous session, we have tried to understand what are the factors that control the textures of igneous rocks. In that, we have said their size of the individual minerals, the shape of the individual minerals, mutual relationship between different minerals as well the degree of minerals or glassy matter in a given rock and they define the textures of igneous rocks. Based on that we have different type of rocks. In general we have said phaneritic or coarse grained minerals and then which are visible in hand and or magnifying lens affinity not visible, we need to use some microscope, such minerals or such kind of textures are found in volcanic rocks like glass or some other rocks like this is about the texture friends. We are not discussing the texture yet, what are all the controlling factors of the texture we said, we will discuss this different type of textures a little later. We have structure is another important physical property we find in rocks that this kind of structure may have developed along with the rock formation itself or after the rock form they may develop. Different type of structures develop. Basically those structures which have developed along with the rock formation are of some interest. Now, we can classify the structure into vesicular. Generally, this kind of structure is more common in volcanic rock, plutonic rocks, hypophysal rocks, they do not develop any specific or special structures. And therefore, textures we mean mostly they are common in volcanic rocks. What is a amygdaloidal structure? What is a vesicular structure? It is interest. Magma depth comes to intermediate depth, they come to the surface. When they reach to the surface, we call lava, as we have already said, escape of gases water vapor process take place. If a high temperature fluid comes to the surface, sudden atmospheric pressure and temperature, the very low pressure and temperature, it means gases and water vapor escape rapidly. While escape, they leave out so many cavities on the surface of the rock, even deeper as well and such a kind of structure which have so much of a cavity like then such rocks we call vesicular. It is mainly due to escape of gases from the lava surface. Amygdaloidal, suppose we have vesicles developed in a rock, rock solidified. Soon after volcano, even today in the geological past, every time when a lava starts solidification and the whatever the gases and water vapor have, they have escaped, they are in the atmospheric level. One day or the other, they fall as rain. So, during any rainfall, these gases that have escaped into the air and the fluids or liquid that have water vapor etc. that have escaped into the air have a special composition than the air elsewhere. What we want to say? Suppose this is a ground, we have volcanic activity from the cooling lava, some gases, water vapor etc. escape, they build locally a kind of atmosphere. If we have an atmosphere where no volcanic activity, the composition of the atmosphere is something different. We have locally 
and therefore these gases have special and when the rain interact with the, these gases have a special composition. When that water flows on the already developed vesicular surface ground, that material has that rain water has a special property to dissolve something from the ground. Also they have brought something with them. The result is they carry some material while flowing over this vesicular surface they may deposit the material which they have brought in a solution and this material can get deposited. Therefore, if I have a rock with some so many cavities we call vesicular and surface flow water flows over them flows over them can deposit something in this and if these cavities are filled by the surface water flowing over them cavities are filled now but they are filled by a material not brought directly by the magma lava but they have also picked up some materials on the ground by virtue of their composition due to lava eruption of course their ability to dissolve is something different they have picked up some, picked up some material and brought and deposited here obviously in the cavity that is deposited has a different composition than the adjacent rock. These are called amygdale, the rock containing these are amygdaloidal and often these amygdales are useful to us that is a kind of a calcite, a kind of a silica, often jewelry quality of silica as developed. Often geolite a kind of mineral, there are different types of minerals. I have shown you the natrolite etc. in our previous session. Those kind of minerals can be found here. Geolite has a special property that is able to remove the hardness of the water. What we, what I can do as a layman, if I have a geolite, I can take it and keep it in my water tank, if my water is hard and they can replace the hardness which is magnesium etc. Salts are responsible for hardness of the mineral. This geolite, what they do? They take those from that water and precipitate them, deposit them and replace them by sodium and thus water become softened. This means water purification, removal of the hardness, geolite is important. This is taking place in nature. We have learnt technology out of it. Now what we do? I can have a synthetic geolite we call geocarb which you will study in your other subject environmental engineering etc. Okay, geocarb, synthetic geolite, it is nothing but. Geolites are developed naturally in this rock, they have some industrial application. Yes, geolites can be found, calcite can be found and gem variety of quartz can also be found like this. So, geolites are formed. We get them in a, such amygdaloidal rock. These are secondary formed or brought from outside and deposited here. They were not formed along with other minerals due to solidification of lava. Therefore, they are secondary brought from outside. 
but they have industrial application. Pillow lava is another important. Suppose this is the land, if this is the sea like this, magma can come onto the sea, sea floor they may deposit. Magma can come onto the land. <coughs> magma can come close to the, this. Magma can come at a great depth. What may happen? If magma comes to the sea bottom, uh, the sea floor at a great depth, water column, pressure of the water column is so high that compresses therefore the magma cannot develop into any shape at all and they simply massive solidified. On the other hand, if magma comes here, the depth of the water column above them is not that high, therefore pressure is not that high. magma is able to withstand the pressure. The magma has a different composition and now they come in contact with the seawater saline. What happens? Yes, we have cooking soda. What is that soda? And for cooking, we use that soda. What happens if we have to bonda like and it has to bulge like and <coughs> that material helps to bulge. Then I add, similarly nature takes place, lava came and came in contact with the sodium rich. See what it is, nothing but NaCl, sodium chloride or sodium rich. The moment magma come in contact with sodium rich water where pressure of the water column is not that high, they tend to bulge like bonda in our oil when we are making. So they bulge. The result is a kind of structure, kind of structure, pillow like. If this is the ground, pillow and pillow, if there are number of like that, pillow like, lay pillow one over the other, like that, pillow structures are developed. This is because due to sudden cooling of lava, in the bottom that is the ocean, but not very deep, not very, very shallow. Somewhere say, I can say, say 8 meter depth, 10 meter depth, approximately 50 meter, not thousands of meter. So, if lava reaches the ocean bottom at a moderate to shallow depth because of sudden cooling of this lava uh, which reacts with the sodium rich water, they developed pillow. What is the message for me? Yes, wonderful, whether it is a pillow structure or something other structure, in what way I am benefited. Yes, friends, this tells us where this is formed. This the moment I have the pillow structure, I can say whether it is formed here, here or here, I can take some message out of it that, yes, how much quantity of rock I can get what could be the thickness of the rock file, etc. I can guess, therefore, pillow structures help me, guide me to understand the type of rock which are sensitive and they have reacted with sodium rich water, yes, plus at what depth they have formed, under water column very high enough, high pressure, if they were able to bulge, is it very solid inside? Sometimes, some of this and quantity of rocks we get. Columnar joint is another structure. When the lava erupts onto the ground, if we have the lava, 
carefully remember yesterday or sorry in our previous class we have discussed lava curves to single opening and then form mountain like hilly like structure or they may erupt through several fracture we call we call fissure eruption it means they came to the land when they come to the land they start a crystallization solidification suppose a lava started solidification one point another point another point there are several centers of crystallization what happens this tends to grow this also tends to grow this also tends to grow what happened there are multiple centers of crystallization and each is growing net the res net result is columnar pillar like structure hexagonal five sides six seven sides beautiful structures can result i show that picture a little later so columnar joints beautiful st mary's island near mangalore malpe coast is one example pillo jogi mardi volcanics near chitradurga is another beautiful example of pillo vesicular structures are common all along the deccan trap maharashtra like that yes columnar structure is another beautiful and when they erupt friends carefully follow pillo structure and rocks which result columnar joints it is at shallow sea it is on the land now columnar structure can be developed in acidic <coughs> magma or basic magma pillow structures are generally developed in basic magma not generally in acidic it is related to composition it is related to the centers of cooling ropy surface is another structure it when the lava simply flows simply flows they develop a smooth surface and materials flow one over the other flow like a structure that is called smooth surface a flow like surface because rocks have solidified from that liquid and that structure developed and then this define an important type of a structure let us see whether in my story they have yes see beautiful pillow like structure beautiful columnar this is a one dimensional in third dimension we have beautiful pillar like structure yes we have lot of uh, cavities uh, vesicles yes those cavities are now filled by secondary materials like a calcite zeolite silica or quartz what i said just now said such beautiful structures are developed and they tell some stories and therefore those structures are important whether i have one more picture to say yes this is a columnar structure just now i have mentioned is st mary island the ropy lava it is a hot magma is but these are already solidified see the structure present a flow like flow like if muds flow what kind of structure we get therefore these are all that kind of structure ropy surface so columnar structures and column pillar like this is pillow like structure cavities amygdaloidal this is vesicular structure different type of structures are produced if lava comes to the surface if it has a depth it is called magma they may not develop such wonderful structures message is such wonderful wonderful structures i have this is a volcanic 
Yes, they have formed like this. Yes, sorry. Yes. We have classified the rocks in a different way. We shall try to classify them not by SiO2, but by the presence or abundance and absence of minerals of minerals present in a lesser quantity. This is very important for civil engineers, okay, for a geologist who are connected with different type of modeling. How do we know that in the cola 2 kilometer depth there is a gold? They take the surface rock based on their composition, they try to model their genesis, pressure, temperature condition, depth, many things whatever they need. So, they require additional information whatever we have said is not enough. They also need what is the abundant mineral, what is the lesser abundant mineral. It is equally important for civil engineers also. I have to take a rock, this is a granite, this is a granite. Both are granite for me. But this granite contains 40 percent SiO2 that is quartz, 40 percent feldspar, another 20 percent mica. This is also another granite, 40 percent quartz, 40 percent feldspar, but mica is 5 percent. Hornbend is another 5 percent, another mineral is another 5 percent, another mineral is another 5 percent. Then which one I select? I know mica mineral is a structure is we have discussed flaky. Flaky means the different layers I can separate with less pressure or with a needle like their contact or binding is very poor in case of mica. If that mineral is nearly 20 percent, that granite is not that good. On the other hand, this granite, mica is just 5 percent. Quartz may be 40 percent here, here also. Feldspar also here 40 percent, 40 percent. But the other mineral which is present, remaining 20 percent, there are so many 5, 6 type of minerals. There may be few magnetite, a few hornblende, few biotite, few muscovite. Then no mineral, weak mineral is in abundance. Obviously, that is attractive for me. Therefore, mineral composition is important for everybody. Yes, that also determines weakness and strength. Yes. What is that essential mineral? It is important, it is present in abundance and determines the property of the rocks as well decides what type of rock it is. Accessory mineral is generally less than 10 percent and they do not define the type of rock, their qualities of the rock, etc they have nothing to do much except their presence little uh, problem or relative uh, dominance of some properties in qualifying some rocks good or some rocks less good etc. Yes, but excessive mineral have a lesser role to play in the strength of the rocks in general occasionally they may define. Okay. So, mineral composition is important. We try to classify the rocks based on abundance or less abundant minerals. Those minerals which are plenty constitute major bulk composition of the rock we call essential accessory. They are very lesser quantity less than say 10 percent. Nature, based on silica percentage, we have already said 65 percent, above 65, 45 to 55 like basic, ultra basic, etc. We have already said. We do classify the rocks 
based on water holding capacity. Fortunately, of course, in industry, we require water holding capacity, but this more applies to sedimentary and metamorphic rock, less applicable to igneous rock if they are plutonic or hepa vessel. If they are volcanic rock, they have a lot of gas cavities. So long as the cavities are not connected, water from one point to another point, they do not move. But rocks are brittle, if they are subjected to pressure, they can develop a cracks like this. Then what happens? This cavity and this cavity are connected through fracture. This cavity, this cavity, they are all connected now. Water can flow from one end to the other end. Now they are able to hold. Otherwise, how do we get along Maharashtra? Everywhere this is a, a best, this kind of best vesicular basalt rich rock, but still we get water because although there are cavities, those cavities are interconnected by fracture system and fracture itself is capable of holding water or together we have plenty of water. Thus, what is that water holding capacity? It is important in especially the foundation site. When I have basalt here, I have basalt here, here it is water holding capacity more, here it is less, I prefer this site. But it is not that important in case of plutonic and hypervisal rock, important in case of volcanic rock, but based on this we are not classifying, but we pay attention to the structure because it determines our site condition. Mode of occurrence, we have already said how exactly we are going to classify. We have concordant, discordant, all we have said. It is just a summary of what I have shown you in the picture. I have shown you this already we have discussed. Yes, this we have discussed. Now again, I am showing the textures of igneous rock. Let us go a little deeper. That determines the engineering properties of the rock. Therefore, textures we will discuss in length or more detail and that is very important property of igneous rock which determines its application in every field. Friends, we will now discuss on textures. We have already defined what is a texture. Plutonic rocks form at a great depth, if this is the column of the ground, great depth, they develop this kind of texture, equal grains, equigranular. All plutonic rocks show equigranular texture. Now, if that magma started solidification, but reach the intermediate depth and they develop this kind of texture in equigranular rocks contain minerals of different size, different shape. The larger grains are more or less have a regular shape, regular shape, geometrical shape. The smaller ones do not have, larger grains have the shape, they have the shape, some better shape they have, whereas these particles are very irregular means plutonic rocks equal grains all are of irregular size, inequigranular means rocks composed of a well shaped larger crystals, irregular shaped smaller crystals. It is a combination made up of both larger size as well as smaller size. This kind of texture we have called porphyritic. 
P.O. Porphyritic texture. Porphyritic texture mean in equigranula there are two types of in equigranula. You find here larger grains are only few in number, smaller grains are majority. That is an unequal size? Yes. I show you another case. I may have the case where only here larger grains are only few in number. In some case, smaller grains are few in number, rest are all larger grain, larger grain, larger grain like this. Means only few grains are smaller, few grains are larger, few grains are smaller. This is also unequal size. Then it is called poikilitic P O I K I L I T I. This also unequal size. I have another situation where we may have another property called if magma from the magma from this depth they reach the surface and develop and solidify. And during the journey also they must have started solidification and all those grains are brought by the magma and they have solidified. If that is the case, we find in the rock there are some grains larger and there are some grains smaller, there are some grains smaller, still smaller. Fine grains to larger grain, all type of textures we call a seriate texture, series of change in grain size. They are also unequal. Inequigranular means it includes all type, but in nature, fortunately, this one is more dominant, this one is less dominant, this is less dominant. We never say they do not happen, they happen. But the majority of the cases, the rocks we come in contact are of this type. Therefore, we deal it with more carefully. This kind of texture is called porphyritic texture. Porphyritic, it is a case of inequigranular. When I say inequigranular, let us not mean it is only porphyritic. It can be poikilate, it can be seriate, but majority of the cases they are porphyritic. Therefore, people carry an impression that inequigranular means it is porphyritic, not so theoretically. Okay. Vesicular we have discussed, amygdaloidal we have discussed, our special attention once again here. I have to place a rock in or use them in foundation of a major structure. I have to use a rock for architectural purpose. I have to use a rock for monumental purpose. I have to use a rock for smooth carving. What kind of rock I can go? Suppose I select this kind of rock, what may happen? If I have selected this rock for foundation of a major dam, because of unequal size, load distribution is not uniform, then there is a chance of unequal load distribution, then unequal load distribution lead to unequal compaction. Ground get compacted more, where more pressure, where less pressure, less compaction. Because of this unequal settlement that become a weakness wherever the ground settle, the superstructure become or develop cracks. So, this is not that ideal. Plutonic 
equigranular texture, rocks are more ideal. I have mentioned architectural work. I quote several times a Hampi and Shravana Bedagula. Let us not carry the impression that only these two are the places where these granites are used. Okay. Because these are world famous structure, wherever you go, people know. If I say Hampe, you go to Poland, you go to Austria, Australia. Yes, people know, they read and uh, about that, they know about that. Yes. Iniqui granular for smooth carving, when I have to chip, this green can escape. This green can escape. Therefore, unequal size is not suitable for smooth carving. Therefore, for such kind of architectural work not suitable. I use for a monumental purpose, example, a structure, Taj Mahal. It has to withstand the atmospheric effect and last for several thousand years, that is the case. If I use such rocks, you see, atmospheric agents can easily attack over them than here because of surface exposure then means a larger crystal a smaller crystal experience different level of atmospheric effect those grains which experience more become weak and they become the source of weakness. If in a rock some grains undergo faster weathering, they get removed. Some grains which do not undergo weathering, they are not prone to removal, erosion, etc. They are found in still present in the rocks. As a result, we have rocks with poor cavities develop because of erosion, non-erosion, there are grains. This become the site of weakness, henceforth rock can undergo deeper weathering by other agents. It means these are not suitable for our monumental work, smooth carving, foundation work, etc. But if I have to use them for uh, facing, polish them, put on the wall, flooring, or kitchen platform, wherever, then that does not make any difference because these are all. Therefore, whether it is a porphyritic or equigranular determines their application in specific industry decorative, facing, dimensional, yes, I can use this like, but foundation, I have to be careful, what is the load likely, is there possibility of this kind of the damage, unequal settlement, etc., what is the kind of structure I have to construct, a smooth carving or like that, very bid we have seen, so beautifully carved, we have read that even a thread we can pass, so smooth carving in bid we have seen. And he used some kind of rock and we say, in Hampi there are several pillars, Sarigama you get. Have you tried? Yes, could be that metallic sound that comes out of the pillar may be because of the metallic content in this pillar, some metal content in some pillar. Then if I hit 8 percent iron, this pillar 2 percent iron, if I hit I get different sounds. See the beauty and for such kind of excellent structure, this kind of rocks are not that attractive. These are the rocks. Thus, the very property of the rock is due to texture. Therefore, texture we shall deal with cautiously and they determine application 
that rock in civil engineering. Now, some more examples of that. This is the amygdaloidal, this is equigranular, vesicular, these are just now what we have shown. Friends, we have tried to classify igneous rock based on the texture that serves one kind of community, means one kind of working group. Another kind of classification who is interested in marketing for him, color is important. This is a red granite, grey granite, dark granite, whichever you feel like. Another person like, he is interested in some academic modeling, search for mineral deposit, how the earth formed, when it is found, what kind of magma came, what kind of mineral deposit it has brought. He is interested in the mineral content and their abundance. Another person is interested only SiO2 content. Therefore, we need to satisfy many people as much as possible. Let us have a combined classification of igneous rock. This helps the student much better to identify and remember as well. Friends, now based on felsic, intermediate, mafic and ultramafic rocks we can classify. Among the felsic we have granite, rhyolite, granite porphyry etc. result. Okay? Similarly, I will add a little more complication little later then. Yes. What do we get in a felsic rock? We have if this is the rock body, nearly 40 percent or 35 percent of the entire rock body, quad itself, sorry, felspar itself is nearly 35 percent, 40 percent. Quartz may be 45 to 50 percent, correct? Then there may be other mineral sodium rich minerals may be there, they may be, then muscovite can be another 10 percent, biotite can be another 10 percent, ampibol can be another 10-15 percent. It means this range, if I have this rock, if I have this rock, I have this rock, this rock. Felsic is one broad composition. Within the felsic, I can have different type of rock. Now, this classification takes into account the minerals present, percentage of minerals, whether 20 percent that, 40 percent that, different minerals, plus also consider the silica content in the rock from that side to this side silica content, these rocks, it means if I have a granite or a rhyolite or a granite porphyry, this is the silica content. If I have a diorite or andesite, their silica content is this much. Gabbro, their silica content is this much. This is ultra basic rock, that silica content less than 45. This is 45 to 55, 55 to 65, 65 onwards like that is silica content also I can add to the classification scheme of igneous rocks. Sodium and potassium, it is a chemical composition, minerals made up of sodium and potassium also I can add here and iron and magnesium content. Example, rocks in this category have low iron and magnesium, their content increases as we go here, calcium, magnesium percentage increases. Temperature is another, that is important for me also because when I select a rock, to what extent it can withstand the temperature. 
in a special case it is important. You go, these rocks are mostly formed at a temperature between 700 to say 900. These rocks are formed at a temperature between these and these are mostly between 1100 to 1200 temperature means as I go towards this direction temperature of formation also vary. Now, if I combine all these, I can develop my simple classification approach. This is how I have evolved my classification scheme. This is not the final table, but how I have tried to integrate the composition of iron and magnesium, the temperature, sodium content, mineral content, SiO2 content plus whether they formed at a depth, whether they formed at intermediate depth, whether they formed on the surface or what are the different minerals all put together, I can have a classification. Friends, in our next session, I give you an overview how we can develop a wonderful classification scheme which can satisfy everybody and you can remember a common man can follow. These are all little complicated although it satisfies many requirement complicated not that simple. Let us try to make it a little more simple in our next session. Thank you.